Well, another year, another season of Game of Thrones has come to a close. Now it's time to talk about that. Funny thing, as this season of Game of Thrones season six was going on, I was like, uh, it's kind of like season five. This is not going to be my favorite season. Nothing's really blowing me away. The hold the door thing that this shit was a good moment. Admittedly so. But I was kind of feeling like this show was losing steam. Then the last two episodes of this season happened and gave us some of the best wrap up ever. And it goes to show you for a show, if the show's going for a long game, have some great wrap up. This season did just that. And if you couldn't tell by the title, I'm not going to talk about everything that happened in season six. I might reference a few things, but all in all, I want to talk about the finale because the finale is the finale and the finale finale, the fucking finale. Going to give you a solid spoiler warning though. If you haven't watched season six of Game of Thrones or the finale of season six, just make sure you've seen all of season six before you watch this video. But we can't talk about the finale without talking about the second to the last episode, Battle of the Bastards. Going to touch on that briefly because holy shit. Ramsay Bolton was a fuck to it and that little moose knuckle got what he deserved. He's taken over Winterfell. He killed the Roos. The Roos is no longer loose. And the Battle of the Bastards, easily the coolest field battle we have seen yet in Game of Thrones. That shit was intense. It was great. After Rickon died, of course, I was like, dude, Rickon, zig, zag, dude, juke. Do something. Nope, straight line. I was like, yeah, Ramsey's gonna, he's dead. Sure enough, Rickon Stark got shot by Ramsey Bolton and now like Jon Snow's just pissed. Cause he's his brother, or is he? And so now he's gonna go and he's gonna get revenge. Sure enough, man. I mean, after the battle goes down, just intense shit. Great stuff. Everything from the execution of them, like the Ramsey's guys like spearing and closing in on, on Jon Snow's guys. You're like, ah, come on, you're all toast. Unless a miracle happens, oh, here comes Peter Baelish with Sansa and the Tully's in their arm. They save the day and then Ramsey Bolton's tied to a chair and he's starved his dogs for seven days and just that's just a lesson right there. Don't starve your puppy. And Sansa's just looking at him and just his dogs just eat his face and Ramsey Bolton's now dead and we're all happy. Ramsey was a shit stain, dude. He just had to go. He just like... When a villain is so villainous, he just has to die horribly. Right, frankly, it's not horribly enough. I wanted to see all of it. I wanted to see his guts and entrails just spell out. But now we come to the finale and he knew from last week, it's like, oh, next week, the trial of Cersei Lannister. And you're like, all right, the trial of Cersei Lannister. She's getting ready for her trial, so you think. She's dressing up nice, so you, well, she is dressing up nice, but not for the trial. And then Gorilla Grodd comes in and just keeps Tommen at bay in his room. And you're like, but it's a... What's going on? Long story short, the little Oliver Twist kids killed Grand Maester Pycelle and Lancel Lannister, they paralyze him and he's crawling. It's like, holy shit, there is a bunch of wildfire with this candle that's burning down. You're like, oh, all right. Everyone in the Red Keep? That's like all of the Tyrells except Granny Tyrell and all of the religious zealots, which for two years, two, two seasons, I've been like, can those religious zealot shitheads just die already? For me, they were just bogging down the entire show. I'm like, dude, just kill them somehow. Three, two, one, candle hits the wildfire. All of it, the Red Keep, shaboom. The religious fucktwits, the Tyrell, the, the Tommen's wife, Marjorie Tyrell, <laughs> Gone. A bunch of folks got eradicated and Cersei just, it happened because she's like, you know what, screw this shit. Tom is looking at it in horror. He's like, oh my God, that, oh my God. Which this is what I've been thinking for about a year now. I'm like, say what you want about Joffrey. He never would have let those shitheads take over his city. He'd have been like, oh, you're keeping who and you're keeping what and you're torturing who? Yeah, you're all toast. It's like Tommen just didn't have enough balls. Like Joffrey, did too much, Tommen didn't do enough. Somewhere in the middle is somewhere where effective lies. And then the great shocker, Tommen takes off his crown. He's like, you know what? Goodbye. And when all of it went up and so it just, Cersei blew everybody up and my words out of my mouth, I was like, Good for her. Undeniably guys, everyone can agree. There is a word to describe Cersei Lannister and it is cunt. Yeah, I know everyone in America is like, ah! Don't say the word. But I have gone through the Rolodex of swear words and slurs and I'm like, assholes, no, bitch, no, douchebag, no, 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 cunts the word. And when a show can get me to go, you know what? Good for her to that character. I just, I just think that's great. I'm just so surprised that this show brought me on. So I've never so completely been on Cersei's side as much as I was in the finale of this season. Right down to the part where she's torturing that Bav Morta shithead with the belly to the lady. Ding, 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 shame, ding, ding, shame, that lady. Torturing the shit out of her and I'm like, Good job, Cersei. We're friends right now. Next season, probably not so much. Cersei Lannister is a great villain. She's effective. She's an asshole. And I just, I love to see her operate, but I hate to love her or love to hate her. I don't know which one, but it's just one of the two. And now Tom is dead, which is great because I was like, line of succession, because for an entire, for this whole year, I'm like, Tommen's sister got killed by the Dornish folks and nothing ever played into that. They were like, all right, funeral. 
And this whole time I was like, are you guys ever gonna, is anything gonna happen for that? What, what was the point of that? Line of succession was the point because she would be next in line to actually rule the seven kingdoms. But now I'm like, don't, Cer holy shit, Cersei's gonna be queen. And she is at the end of the episode, she gets her crown and you're like, okay, if we're, the kids were the thing grounding her. She was like, you know what? I want to be a dick to everything, but my kids are just, they come first. They're, my love for them supersedes my wrath and rage for everything else. Now she doesn't have anything. Now she's going to fight for Cersei. And something tells me that Cersei fighting for Cersei without her kids to ground her with love is probably just a very dangerous and horrific thing. Can't wait to see it. Uh, I do wonder, Jamie Lannister comes back. Jamie Lan I mean, Tommen was every bit his kid as much as he was Cersei Lannister's kid. But I wonder if there's going to be antitrust between between those two. I wonder if Jamie's gonna talk to Cersei at least once and be like, did you want Tommen to die? Or did you not? Like, did, were you hoping he would kill himself so you could take the throne? Tell me it's not true. Just, it has to be in his head. He knows she's shrewd and conniving. So, I mean, I know like, no, Cersei's love is absolute for her kids. He would never think that. But he would, it would at least cross his mind. So I want there to be at least a little bit of antitrust there. Cersei, Getting that throne has caused her to have a lot of enemies. The Lannisters have a lot of enemies. Now the Lannisters are ruling the Seven Kingdoms. Now Daenerys finally has her ships with some Lannister enemies over there, man. They got the Greyjoys, well at least a couple of the Greyjoys and some of the Greyjoys. The young Greyjoy and his sister got the hell out of the Iron Islands when their uncle came back, killed their father. He's like, all right, let's go kill those two shitheads. So they make a pact with Daenerys. Daenerys also makes a pact with the Dornish folk. I mean, just a lot of ships are coming to King's Landing finally. It's like, yeah, we've heard about this shit for about five years now. F this half a decade of hearing about how Daenerys is going to come to King's Landing. Now she is on her way. Barring something stupid happening, like they run into Theon Greyjoy's uncle's ships and they all get into a big old ship skirmish and they go back over there and like, all right, uh, we really got her ass kicked. We got to think about it. We got to regroup for another year. Barring something dumb like that happening next season, they are going to land and there's going to be a battle, a war, a thing. Not even including the fact that now once again, there is a divide because everyone was like, Jon Snow, King in the North, King in the North. It's like, sorry, Peter Baelish. Not today. Funny thing is I love how they brought in Benjamin Stark for like two episodes. It's like he comes in all like, hey, Bran, I'm your uncle. Peace. All right, I, I guess. But among the Jon Snow stuff, they finally give the big reveal of Jon Snow's lineage. That was a huge deal. That was a big thing because that's been a fan theory for a long time. I read the first book and only the first book and it's an excellent book. But even reading that first Game of Thrones book, you completely pick up on the nuance in the book. In book one where you're like, I think Jon Snow is Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen's son. And so that's the big thing, is that Lyanna Stark had a kid with Rhaegar Targaryen. The story, history is written by the victors. That is a reality in stories and in life. So the story is Lyanna Stark was kidnapped by Rhaegar Targaryen and raped. In reality, it's probably something along the lines of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen probably just formed an actual relationship and had a child. Ned Stark's the only one who knew. And so he took this kid on her behest. She was like, don't tell Robert Baratheon because he will kill him. He's a Targaryen child. Robert Baratheon would absolutely kill this kid. So Ned Stark took it upon himself to be like, yeah, I'm gonna wipe my ass with my honor among everybody. My wife is gonna think I cheated on her. Everyone's gonna be like, hey, Ned Stark cheated. That's totally horrible. He has no honor. He's gonna do that for his sister's child and her dying wish because he's like, I can't let anyone know that this is a Targaryen kid. He's going Going to be Jon Snow and everyone will know him as my bastard. To be fair, they kept it vague and all you know is he's Lyanna Stark's kid. You don't know that he's Rhaegar Targaryen's kid, but the fact that she was like, don't tell Robert Baratheon because he'll kill him. It's kind of, there's no other, Robert Baratheon would only want to kill one kind of baby at that time and that would be a Targaryen child. Now the King in the North is a Targaryen, which I find pretty sweet. I think next season is going to be the big battle where Daenerys is going to come in with her dragons like Aegon Targaryen. There's a lot of Targaryens. So is Cersei Lannister going to be like, oh, Jon Snow's a problem up there while she's fighting Daenerys and that whole army? Is Jon Snow going to be like, hey Daenerys, why don't the two of us team up? Because Bran's going to come back and be like, hey Jon, about your lineage. We're actually cousins. But your aunt is declaring war on the Lannisters. We all hate him too, so let's just team up with her. So Targaryens running the North and the other Seven Kingdoms? I feel like that's gonna be next season, and then the final season's gonna be the huge, like, White Walkers are coming down, so they're all gonna have to team up for that shit too. But in the end, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because it's like this. That kid just needs to give one speech to everybody, and she's like, yeah, now I'm running shit. Everyone agrees? All right, yeah, Daenerys, thank you for the crown. Thank you for the throne. Thank you for the three dragons. You didn't have to give those to me too, but you did. That's what makes you great. Oh, Oh, and those white walkers and that whole invasion from the north, I took care of that. 
like while I was giving this speech. Little Lady Mormont, she is awesome, dude. She is the shit. Admittedly, my favorite part of the season finale, this season finale had a lot of cool stuff happening. As I'm talking about it, I'm like, wow, this did have a lot of cool stuff in this one episode alone. But my favorite part is probably when Walder Frey's having his little party and there's that girl who keeps looking at Jamie Lannister. You're like, oh, she totally wants him. Totally, right? Then that girl did some Sweeney Todd shit and sliced up Walder Frey's kids and made them pies. And you're like, oh, did Jamie Lannister hire this girl to kill Walder Frey? Because he kind of gave him harsh words earlier. And she takes off her face and she's like, my name's Arya Stark. And I was like, no way. No fucking way. Awesome. She kills Walder Frey out of there. And that's one of the, that's what I like about this is now the show is showing us that it's finally happening. It being all of it. Everything we've heard about, we've heard that Daenerys is gonna come over the sea and she's gonna try, she's gonna take King's Landing. Now it's happening. Arya Stark's gonna get revenge on these people that killed her family. Now it's happening. The buildup is finally paying off and Arya killing Walder Frey, Matt, it was just a really gratifying moment. That was when I was like, oh, Arya is gonna start scratching names off of that list. It's like, she's like Batman at this point. She learned from the League of Shadows everything she needed to learn now she's gonna go on her mission to do her thing. The bummer is guys I think next season is Cersei Lannister's last season with us. I don't think she's gonna make it through that. There's a lot of bad blood gonna come clashing in the next season man. You got Tyrion Lannister fighting Cersei Lannister. Jaime Lannister caught in the middle of all that shit. Jaime Lannister probably caught in the middle of Brianna Tarth who is up there with the Starks. They're friends but now they gotta be enemies. They're, they're frenemies now but it's like frenemies to the death kind of shit. I mean next season should be nuts. So yeah, this season of Game of Thrones was crazy and I'm looking forward to next season and I want to know what you think about it. So, season six of Game of Thrones, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.